So I'm, I'm always coming up with new projects for myself and this one was presented to me. So all I had to do was figure out the board to make and came up with a uh, elephant gun, 11.4. And uh, it's a model that I make, uh, it's a C2 gun. I started making it about five years ago. And I really like that board. I really love shaping that board. Anything special about the construction of, of this board? Well, I wanted to really go crazy on the, on the build. I start by cutting up a 11-3 blank made of tow-weight foam. This foam's really heavy and it's gonna end up being the shell of the finished blank. Next I mill and cut uh, the six redwood stringers, the old growth redwood. I do this dry run to make sure everything fits before I glue the blank together. Uh, then I'll uh, glue the stringers and then spot glue the rest of the blank. I'm going to be chambering this whole board and filling it with lightweight foam. At this point I measure and mark up the blank, noting and circling the differences between the blank and the finished board. I study this for a few minutes so I know where I'm headed before I skin the blank. Then I template and cut it out with a skill saw. I keep the saw plumb so I don't transfer any changes up to the deck. I've shaped quite a few of these C2 guns now and they come together really good. Uh, they have a lot of complex curves in them with the uh, beveled concave in the back and then the, the um, rolled hull up in the nose and uh, it really is nice to shape a board that you become accustomed to shaping. Throughout making this board this area is really challenging. Uh, the concave, the bevel, the hard edge back here. It's unique to this board and I really enjoy this part. Now this is supposed to be just the rough shape before I break the blank apart and chamber it, but I still uh, get pretty close to a finished board because that way I see where I'm headed and my tolerances when I'm chambering can stay real tight. That's 40 pounds before chambering. I'm going to chamber it, fill it, and leave the hard shell. When you spot glue, there's a delicate balance between getting the board glued enough so you can work on it, but not going outside of the borders of the skin of the of the finished blank. So those dots should all be in the middle or not near the edge. Uh, no tear outs and I was happy about that. Setting up for 12 inch chambers. I've been using this system for about four years or so and I just keep the uh, story pole and these spacing blocks um, screwed up on the wall and whenever I want to do one of these projects I just pull them down and pull out the routers. The center stringers are through and through and when I add the lightweight foam it'll be a pretty strong structure. I've also left uh, some outboard stringers fully intact uh, to add strength so there's a full inch of um, solid stringer. All the chambers are staggered. It's for strength. Uh, I believe that once this board's put together and it's back to being one unit, we'll have a uh, 
super hard shell, strong surfboard. But the groove is still there. There's a lot of delicate parts when this board is broken apart like this, and I had a thousand chances to screw it up. Uh, I did luck out through this process, and I didn't have any problems that were terminal. There it is. All the chambers ready for foam filling. There was close to a hundred of these blocks and they went pretty fast once I got the system of um, marking them, cutting them, sanding them, and uh, keeping track of them. That was really the hard part. I took this project one phase at a time, but I still had to always look ahead to the next step. This is the first time I've ever done anything with this much chambering, uh, especially with this uh, using foam. There's lots of challenges just in clamping the foam and gluing the foam. And I always had to clamp from the side whenever I, uh, I glued um, blocks in because the Gorilla glue expands and it would have pushed out those uh, blocks and ruined my day. So I had to work pretty fast and um, get those sides clamped. I'll tell you, I was really happy to get this thing back in one piece. Uh, the pressure was off. down to 26 pounds. So 14 pounds of that blank was reduced to fine dust. When I was doing the finished shaping, it was nice and quiet and easy, and it gave me time to just think about the pen and the glassing, the colors, and uh, it's just that time when you actually see everything come together and it's actually looking like a surfboard. Ready to glass, finally. I sealed the whole blank before I started to laminate because it has so much redwood. Uh, you know, if you get the glass on there and the redwood blisters and uh, your project is toast, so I, I sealed the whole thing. Since the strength of this board is in the shell of the blank, uh, I went with a single eight ounce Volan top and bottom. Once I finish with this lamination, I'm gonna do what I call a reinforced hot coat. First, I prep the board for a zip cut and I dress it with four ounce cloth. Then I laminate. I paste the rails and I just hot coat like normal. I zip cut it and repeat the whole process on the other side. And I sand the hell out of it so that four ounce weave is showing everywhere. A thick base fin really works well with this concave in the tail. So that's what I went with on this board. I start by making a thin panel, uh, 10 layers of eight ounce Volan uh, in amber. I'm going to sandwich that between two layers of this really nice old growth redwood I have that I've been using for years. So I end up with a one inch thick uh, thin blank. 
I wanted to taper and foil this so it had a one inch base and just over a quarter inch tip. So I uh, made the sled. It's a uh, tapering jig uh, that runs through a uh, surface sander. Here's a look at the sled. The block on one side is twice as high as on the other. There's the taper with room for foiling. That thin panel of glass in the center is really nice to sand to, but the main function is for uh, strength and also a place for the glass to um, die into. I didn't want it to look like a bead with this shape of fin. I wanted it to be a um, kind of a thick pinstripe and uh, kind of decorative with the uh, color of the rails. And I always seal redwood. The temporary base that I make for the fin at this stage really makes life easy. I, it's just uh, there to work so I could work on the fin and then I cut it off and once again I seal the base. I'm going to break over the roving so it doesn't white out after you um, make the, uh, the bead or the fillet. Next I do a super thin hot coat and then I sand again. On the initial sanding I was able to uh, get into that concave without a fin there and it was really nice with the machines but now that I'm uh, working in tight quarters here I do a lot of uh, hand work there around the fin and then uh, once again I sand everything down to that four ounce weave. I do a lot of blocking in this phase. And the jitterbug. My panels and pinstripes are all going to be linear, so I just stand with 100 grit lengthwise. When I'm doing this many pinstripes, I splurge and I get a fine line tape. Uh, it just makes life easier in the prepping afterwards. So I'm, I've chosen some uh, to do the rails in um, burnt orange. All this color is in resin. Here I'm taping for a super thin, transparent amber pin line. You watch all the details on the front end so you don't have to clean up a mess. Uh, cleanup is a lot harder than just um, taking the time to keep it all tight. Whenever I do transparent pin lines, I always uh, use a little sun cure so it kicks right away so it doesn't have time to run. Uh, transparent lines, you don't, you don't have any leeway. In this case, ghost pins. So the finished board weighs 38 pounds, which is pretty much my target uh, weight. An old uh, elephant gun, 11.4, you know, almost four inches thick from 1964 would weigh in about 42 pounds. I was trying to come right under that and that's what, what I did. I'm uh, pretty stoked.